Upgrading the hard drive in your iMac may sound like a difficult task, but it's easier than you may think. Lucky for you, today I'm gonna walk you through replacing the hard drive in your late 2012 iMac. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're gonna to be working on a 27 inch late 2012 iMac. The opening and disassembly of this machine is almost the same as a late 2013 and even the most recent 5K Retina machines. But when you're working on your machine, make sure to follow the guide specific to your iMac. To find out which iMac you have, take a look under the foot of your iMac to find the EMC number. Looking up that number will tell you your iMac's exact model. For this repair, you're going to need an iMac opening tool, a plastic card, a spudger, a T10 Torx screwdriver, a T9 screwdriver, and a set of adhesive strips. I'm also gonna be using this iMac service wedge. This foam block allows you to have easy access to the internals of your iMac without worrying about the display moving around. It's not absolutely essential, but it will make it a bit easier to work on your iMac. Now to get started, we're gonna use our iMac opening tool. The iMac opening tool will keep you from pushing in too far, but if you're using anything else to do your prying, you need to be careful that you don't insert your tool more than 3 8 of an inch. There's several cables and connectors you could damage by inserting your prying tool too far into your iMac. Starting on the bottom left side of the display near the power button. Insert the iMac opening tool into the gap between the glass panel and the rear case. With your opening tool inserted, just roll it like a pizza cutter up the left side of the display. When you get to the top, just continue around the corner and continue along the top of the iMac, cutting the foam adhesive as you go. You may have to make multiple passes to cut all the adhesive, and if you find a sticky spot as you go, simply roll the opening tool back and forth over that spot. Finish pushing the opening tool to the bottom of the right side of the display. At this point, you'll want to make another pass around the display with your opening tool just to ensure to cut as much adhesive as possible. Once you're able to move your tool freely along the edges, you can move on to the next step. The iMac opening tool should have done most of the work on that adhesive, but just in case, we're gonna get our plastic cards in there to unstick everything. For this part, you're gonna wanna lay your iMac on the table face up and use your plastic cards to begin separating the display from the rear case. It should only take some gentle prying. If you're encountering some resistance, try running your opening tool back over the section you're working on and then try the card again. But remember, it's very important not to insert your prying cards more than 3 8 of an inch into your iMac. As you're working across the top, make sure you stop before you get to the eyesight camera. The prying can damage it. Simply leave your card in place to keep the glue from resetting and move to the opposite corner, working your way back towards the eyesight camera. With both cards in place and the adhesive cut along the top, we're gonna try to lift the glass from the back panel. We're only gonna lift the display a few inches because it's still attached to the logic board by cables. To disconnect the cables, you're gonna hold the display up with one hand and disconnect the cables with the other. With the cables disconnected, you can lift the front glass up to an almost vertical position. There's still a strip of adhesive at the bottom. If it feels stuck, you can use your card to cut away the adhesive from the inside. Be very careful not to touch any of the solder joints on the back of the power supply. Capacitors may be charged enough to give you a dangerous shock. And now, you can take the display off. Just be extremely careful as it's deceptively heavy. All right, the hard part's over. Now onto the hard drive. 
I have good news and bad news. The bad news is we have to remove the left speaker to get to the hard drive. The good news is it's super simple. Starting with these two T10 screws. I'm gonna remove those and then get to work on disconnecting the speaker cables from the logic board. To disconnect the speaker cable from the logic board, pull straight out and deroute the cable from the gap between the hard drive and the logic board. Use a spudger to disconnect the power button connector from the socket on the logic board. Be very careful not to touch any of the solder joints on the back of the power supply. Capacitors may be charged enough to give you a dangerous shock. Now you can lift the speaker out of the iMac until the power button cable is exposed and gently deroute the cable from the groove in the left speaker. With the cable out of the way, the speaker should lift right out. Finally, it's time for the hard drive. You can start by pulling straight up on the SATA cable to disconnect it from the hard drive. With it disconnected, you can remove the two T10 screws securing the left hard drive bracket to the rear case. The hard drive and bracket can now be lifted out of the rear case. The last thing you need to do is remove the four T9 screw posts from the hard drive and transfer them to your new replacement drive. For reassembly, we recommend you follow the step-by-step -step guide on ifixit.com in reverse. If you need a little help reapplying your display, make sure you check out our iMac Adhesive Strips Repair Guide as it'll walk you through getting your display back on. You can find all the parts and tools you need for this and many other repairs at ifixit.com and let us know how it goes. You can find me on Twitter at Gwendolyn Gay and follow ifixit at ifixit. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.